Welcome to 5 Minute School and in today's video we're going to be talking about pericarditis. So pericarditis is the inflammation of the pericardium which is a double walled sac, a fibrous sac that surrounds the heart. The cause of pericarditis is numerous. It can be infectious, collagen vascular disease, metabolic, some kind of injury or a neoplasm that can cause pericarditis. So in the infectious route, it can either be viral like the Coxsackie virus, bacterial like tuberculosis or staphylococcal, or mycotic like actinomycosis, or it can be protozoal and nu numerous other infections. The collagen vascular disease as a cause of pericarditis can be a scleroderma, rheumatoid arthritis, and systemic lupus erythematus. The metabolic can be renal failure. The injury can be myocardial infarction, trauma, or some kind of radiation. And a neoplasm can even cause pericarditis as well. So the way pericarditis works is we have the cause or the etiology which results in acute inflammation in the pericardium. So we have infiltration of polymorphonuclear lymphocytes and we have increased vascularity as well. Later on you can get deposition of fibrin depending on the stage and if pericarditis is, is occurring over a long period of time eventually the pericardium can become fibrotic and scarred and calcium deposition will occur as well. Once the pericardium does become fibrotic, it basically inhibits the ventricles being filled properly because there is constraint around the ventricles, so they wouldn't be able to fill to their maximum potential. And when we have this, it's known as constrictive pericarditis. The symptoms of pericarditis involve severe chest pain, which is retrosternal and it radiates to the back and worsens with deep breathing or coughing. So retrosternal is basically behind the sternum and the pain is said to radiate to the back. The pain usually worsens when lying down and improves when sitting and leaning forward and we have some other symptoms as well which include the pericardial friction rub and Kussmaul sign. The pericardial friction rub is basically when you are using a stethoscope to listen to the heartbeat you'll be able to hear a louder sound which is divided into three components it's usually louder than the heartbeat itself it consists of one systolic and two diastolic sounds and if you can see from the diagram we have the pericardium which is a double walled sac and in between there is pericardial fluid and when we have this inflammatory response it basically increases the size the size of the walls so there's less fluid in between because of the enlarged walls so they basically rub together and this is one of the key diagnostic features of pericarditis because then these two walls rubbing against each other result in this sound which is heard through oscillation and this sound is known as the pericardial friction rub Another sign of pericarditis is Kussmaul sign, which is where we have a rise in jugular venous pressure on inspiration, or we can have a failure in the fall of the jugular venous pressure with the inspiration. It's not normal for the jugular venous pressure to rise during inspiration, but it's seen in the cases of pericarditis. And it's a key sign which shows that the right ventricle is not being filled properly and this is the case especially in constrictive pericarditis where the ventricles are not being filled properly.